Hey everyone, welcome to another on Donnet Live. My name is Cecil Phillip, and today I have a very special guest that's joining me. Theodora is here, and she's going to talk to us a little bit about building mobile applications with Xamarin and her, talk about her experience as a student and as, as someone that's new to Xamarin, how she was able to create this really cool app. But before that, I want to mention a few things that has happened over the past couple of weeks. So first of all, we just came off of Microsoft Ignite. So for those of you who don't know, it's one of our big conferences that you know we do at Microsoft. And there are a few interesting projects that came up that I really want to make sure that everyone knows about. One, we released a new service called Azure Communication Service, which is really cool. So it's one of those services that you could use to add communication functionality to your applications, whether it's web apps or mobile apps. You know, you could you know get a phone number and add text messaging capabilities. You can add video and voice capabilities. Um, you can answer calls and you can reply to calls. You can do tons of great stuff inside of your app. And I think that's just the beginning too. Like I'm, you know, I'm going to expect that a lot more great stuff is going to come there. Um, it's in preview today. You could try it out if you want to. Just head over to Azure.com and look for Azure Communication Service, and that'll be a great thing for us to kind of try out. And I really want to see what y'all are going to build with it. Um, next thing I want to mention is Azure Static Web Apps announced support for Blazor and also .NET Core functions running. So now you can you build Azure Static Web Apps using Blazor, using um, functions written in C Sharp and .NET and F Sharp and you know, all of the .NET languages that we support, um, and that's available now. Um, so also Azure Static Web Apps is also still in preview. So I definitely recommend you go ahead and check it out and, you know, make sure you send us some feedback so we know, like, how do you like it, if there's things that you think we should do better, and, and those types of things. But other than that, um, not, those are our announcements for the day. So please, I mean, go ahead and try those. But I kind of feel like I just, I want to jump into the conversation, man, and talk to Theodora for a little bit and, and find out what's going on. So... So Theodore, why don't you really quickly, you know, let us know who you are and you know what exactly it is that you do. Hello, everybody. I'm Theodora Tataru, originally from Romania, living in Ireland at the moment. I'm a software develop a development student in uh, in IT Carlo, and I'm in my final year. And because of COVID, I spent my summer building an app. So uh, I think that's it. <laughs> You know, I've never been to Romania before. Um, I've been to a, a lot of different countries, but I've never been to Romania. Could you tell me a little bit about, you know, so for me, like, you know, I grew up in the Caribbean and I live in Florida right now. So I'm very used to warm weather and, you know, lots of sunshine and like that type of stuff. Like what's, what's Romania like? Like what's the culture of the people like over there? Um, people are very warm. They they will open your door and we will welcome you in their houses. Um, Weather-wise, we have four seasons, so you can enjoy a really hot summer at the seaside or you can enjoy skiing in the winter in the mountains. Nice. Um, we have a very, very big culture, so you could find so many things to do and interesting stuff and seeing the, the countryside and in the same time you could see really developed cities and not the last thing, Dracula is not true. <laughs> <laughs> no Dracula is in Romania, it's not right. No. Now. Okay. So, so since you moved away to, you know, and you're living somewhere else now, like, do you miss going home? Do you get to go back often and you know, see family and things like that? Um, usually I go once a year and it's always great, but yeah. I think I climatized and I kind of feel Ireland like being home now. Like my life is here and my friends are here. My community is here. Um, the only the only that I don't have here are my parents. And yeah, yeah. I really miss them. But yeah. other than that, I, I'm growing here. So That's awesome. Yeah, I feel very much the same way. I mean, I, I came, you know, I moved to where I'm living now when I was a teenager. And I'm obviously not a teenager anymore. Um, and you know, it's 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 interesting how, you know, as time goes on, like you establish like a new home, a new place that you know you're gonna live. Uh, but like your roots are always where you originally came from, right? Like you always identify as, you know, like I'll always identify as an Antiguan or a Caribbean person. You know what I mean? Even yes. though at this point I've spent more of my life outside the country than I have like, inside. <laughs> Which is kind of interesting when you think about it. It's great to have like very deep roots, but we big wings to fly. So yeah, if you exactly. have both, that's exactly what you need to to grow in the in the world. Exactly, exactly. So you are a software development student, right? Right now, you know, still studying. 
Yes. What made you decide to pursue a um, you know career in like technology and programming? Uh, before I had uh, a different path of uh, in my career. I, I am a mature student. So in Romania, I was working in security and protection, not cybercrime, physical security for five years. And when I came to Ireland, uh, I was a housekeeper for five years. So I knew that I wanted more. I knew I could can do more. So me and my fiance, we made the arrangements to go back to college and, and start yeah. again. Nice. And it's always great too when, you know, people take the opportunity to just like take the risk and try something new and different. Um, Cause you never know what's going to happen. Right. You know, I, you know, I know I have friends that have changed careers and changed, you know, went to study something different. Um, because I think at the end of the day, like you have to find the thing that you love, right? The thing that you want to do, the thing that you enjoy doing, the thing you have passion in doing, right? And that for me, like makes the whole difference, right? Because now that's the thing that you're going to be able to do for a long time, right? So when you think about like a legacy in a career and being able to build something and being able to leave something behind, you know, I mean, you have to really love what you do if you're going to be able to accomplish those types of goals. Yes, you need to get out of your comfort zone and, you know, do the skiing things that you're scared of to, to achieve yeah. what you want. Right. And so I'm, I'm peeping in the chat really quickly. And someone here is named Ananda. She yes, says, that's, that's my sister. Do you know who Ananda yes. is? Yes, that's my, that's my sister. Yeah. And I say hi, hi to Ananda. her and I miss her so much. She was in Florida until oh, now. Really? Got it. Okay. That's awesome. <laughs> So, so tell me a little bit now, um, like I was reading some of your story. I mean, there's, there's some, some blog posts and also some, um, some podcasts that are out and let me know if I'm getting the story right, but like, you know, so you were supposed to do an internship and obviously the world is a little bit different than we expected it to be in the middle of a pandemic and a lot of folks have to be home. People aren't traveling as much as they used to and you weren't able to do your internship, right? Like, could you, could you tell us about that a little bit? So um, as part as our, our course, we need to, to go outside in the industry and do an internship. And I, I got an internship with a very nice company, one of the companies on the top of my list. Now, yeah. of course, COVID happened. People were not prepared for something like that. So a few days before the internship was about to happen to start, uh, it got canceled. And I was devastated because some internships went on and i knew that the graduation will come and i will need you know experience i would need to put something on my cv that's that's heavy enough to allow me to get a position or or an interview so um you know after a period of crying and so on <laughs> i i said okay i'm gonna search for a project that uh, yeah. will allow me to gain the experience to to challenge myself to yeah. to to learn new technologies and ultimately to get the experience to put on my cv so that's what i did this summer working on the on the college, college diary app awesome i find in different schools and universities too their curriculum is so very different you know um like, you know, some schools focus on certain programming languages and some schools focus on certain types of research, for instance, like for your school, like what are some of the things that you were doing already before you started to like build this app with Xamarin? So uh, we started our journey in college with Java. Um, okay. That was something completely programming was a completely new concept to me when I when I joined the college. Uh, we did some Python, some C++. Uh, my college, thanks God, is not very heavy on theory. It's more like learning by doing. So you get lots of yeah. labs to do, lots mm -hmm. of fun labs, yeah. and some not so fun and you know <laughs> frustrating. But um, yeah, I, I learned what's the most important. I learned the object-oriented languages. And once you, you right. get those basics very good, you can switch between languages. And I don't say 100%, but for a very big percentage, just the syntax is changing. And of course, right. other other things in depth. But if you understand object oriented, you should be grant. Yeah. I mean, I think we're lucky in the fact that with, with computer science and with, with software development, you know, once you understand the fundamentals, you know, it's very easy for you now to like move around and pick different things to do. You know? Yes. Like one of, one of the questions I get a lot from students is always, 
oh, hey, I want to do computer science. Like, how can I be really good at it? And, <laughs> and I feel like that's such a big statement. Like, there's so much in there to try and understand. Because one, I'm always like, well, well what do you like to do? Right? Like, what do you want to do? Because there's so many different areas of focus. Like, you could do security. You could do, you know, you could work on software. You could work on software. You could build mobile apps. You could build websites. You could do databases. You could do machine learning and AI. Like, there's this things to do, right? There's a lot to do. And, you know, one of the worst things that we could do is try to learn it all. <laughs> oh. But well, because they would never leave school. We'd be in school forever, right? Like, we can't learn at all. And so now, yes. you know, for folks, I always say, well, hey, as you're, as you're going down this journey, you're trying to understand what does it mean for me to be successful in this field? Like, I always tell folks, hey, really sit down and think about what are the things that excited you about coming here in the first place? And for a lot of people, sometimes that's like making video games. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of people like to play video games and they're like, hey, well, I like to play them, so maybe I could try and make them, right? <laughs> yes, yeah. it, it is true. At this point in my life, I don't know what exactly I want from my career. Like so many different things in computer science, they are so attractive. Uh, yeah. I tried mobile development because that made sense to you to build it from A to Z and then release it into, into the world. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there is machine learning and artificial intelligence and and big data and so many things that you could dive in and they could be fascinating that I don't know about. So <laughs> yeah, that's true. So then you know, with all these different things that we could all play with, what made you decide to go and start working with Xamarin? Like, what was the thing that attracted you to that? Well, um, so I decided to do a mobile app because, as I said, it made sense to to build it from A to Z, like. Mm -hmm. We use mobile apps every day, but I didn't start in Xamarin. I, I started in Android Studio because, you know, we, we learned Java and it made a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, Android Studio was a little bit tricky. I I don't know. It just didn't click to me. Yeah. Uh, then I tried React, React, React Native. That was, mm -hmm. that was okay, too. But then a friend of mine and a colleague of mine, uh, Liliana O'Sullivan, told me about Xamarin because she was using that at her work placement. And I was like, okay, I, I would like to try it. So I did a lot of research. I was trying to find some tutorials to, to gain some basics, you know, to know where for, to start. Mm -hmm. And um, in the end, I, I ended up using it and I really enjoyed it. That's awesome. And, you know, you, you kind of hit on something that that's a little personal to me. Mm -hmm. and the fact that like you start to look for tutorials and learning tools to get you up to speed with learning it. And that's a part of what my team does, you know, inside the company. Like we work on learning materials for different folks so they can understand how stuff works and how to start using it, right? So I'm, I'm kind of curious, like what types of material did you find online or, you know, books or things like that, that really helped you to get up to speed with what you're doing today? I'm really happy that you asked that. So normally you should go and read the documentation, but, yeah. you know, being at the beginning of with the new technology, I usually try to find like a video course. And yeah. the the only one that I found that was ma made really nice was on LinkedIn and it was called um, Mastering Xamarin Forms. Mm -hmm. So I followed that tutorial. Um, I think it made like a paper, like a, an online ma magazine app, something like that. Mm -hmm. So that gave me the basics. Now, when yeah. I went to the documentation, at this point, it made sense. Yeah. <laughs> now, maybe it's just me, but like I, I don't just sit and read, Nothing you know, so. hundreds of documents. <laughs> and yeah, I need to see it. I need to feel it before I, I get interested in that. Yeah. You know, I'm a little bit of the same way. I like to... I like to kind of dive in, right? Like I'll, I'll read the hard stuff first because I'm going to read the hard stuff and I know I'm not going to understand all of it, but I want to see what's possible. You know what I mean? Like I want to see like, I want to see where we're going to. You know what I mean? I don't want to see like the end of the story, but I want to see like the middle of the book, if that makes sense. Okay, yeah. So I read like the middle of the book first. I'm like, okay, I understand the direction. And then once I get a good, like once I'm, you know, a little stable, then I'll now I'll start looking at the documentation and be like, okay, well, how does this control work or how does this function work? Or, you know, how can I achieve this feature or that feature or whatever the case is? And I'm kind of like what you said, right? Like after that point, like the documentation makes a lot more sense, right? 
because sometimes sometimes documentation <clears throat> might have like certain assumptions that you might not understand and now you gotta now you still gotta go dig around for it anywhere to try and find like the thing that that works yeah. for you so i'm looking in the chat here i just want to make sure we acknowledge our folks in the chat uh, we have someone here um walid i hope i'm pronouncing your name correctly he says hi i'm a computer science student and i'm in my last year too so that's good so we have some computer science students and whatnot in the in the house welcome um myers is here myers is saying in android studio i troubled i struggled with debugging i mean if the bare essential functionality not working properly so no real sense to continue with it so it sounds like it sounds like myers didn't have a good time with android studio at all. <laughs> maybe you'll have some Maybe you'll have fun with Xamarin. I don't know. Maybe we'll see what happens. We'll have to get into it. So, so I guess I guess with that being said, um, why don't we why don't we start talking about this app that you built, right? So, yep. so we understand that okay. So you had an internship. You weren't able to you know we weren't able to go to it. Now you spoke to some of your friends. You started working with Xamarin. You found some tutorials. You went on LinkedIn Learning. You know you started picking up stuff. So now. I'm kind of curious because it feels like to me that you were able in a very short period of time to build an app, right? Maybe like three or four months or something like that, right? So you went from like no app to app, you know? <laughs> zero you, to hero. Like zero to hero, right? <laughs> before building apps or was this like your first mobile app that you built before? No, it was my my first one. Uh, I was uh, I was always attracted to processing and logic. So building an app automatically means you have to build the interface as well. So yeah. it was it was challenging, but that was was my purpose. I needed to I needed to learn new things. I wanted to develop myself in this pandemic, get something positive out of it. So okay. no, it was zero experience. That's awesome. So why don't you why don't you tell us a little bit about yeah I know you have some, like some slides and stuff like that you want to start sharing and we could start to kind of learn about it and what it does and how you how you made it yes I would love to do that um, I think my my screen froze um, okay so as I said I'm a student I'm a student in software development in my in my final year when I started building this app I was finishing my third year so I had one more year to go and my internship got uh, got canceled so I am here to show you my app what I built over this summer and uh, what I did to add value to my to my CV uh, so the idea came from my experience in college when I was keeping my results in spreadsheets and papers and maybe other apps. But every time I was getting a new result, um, I was, you know, I had to recalculate everything, was error prone, was time consuming. So because I had the time, I said, I am going to do a mobile application that would allow me to insult results and do all the calculation for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, these are the technology that the technologies that I used. Uh, most of them, uh, besides Visual Studio and Windows, they were new technologies. But yeah, that was the purpose. So um, I I I did a lot of research. I I talked with a lot of people. Um, I played a lot with the technologies before I started, and in the end, I got my app that cal it's calculating my average in real time as simply as inserting a, a result into my app. So, uh, Xamarin. Well, first of all, is using a backend language. So, as I said before, I'm very attracted to uh, processing and logic. So building a, a mobile app, but gaining experience in a, in a backend language. It was the ultimate gold. And another beautiful thing is one single code for, for multiple platforms. That was, you know, amazing because if I was building in Android Studio and the end of the journey, I would have just an Android, uh, an Android app. Right. So not an Apple app. Um, and in the end, it was well. I, I saw that it was well documented and used by the online community. So whenever I had the problem, I could find answers. Um, Sync Fusion helped me with the with the interface, and they had so beautiful controls, and they they helped me a lot with the 
the the amount of work I had to put in to build some things, like for example, a calendar, like creating a calendar from the scratch. I think it's just kind of it, it won't take five months. It will take maybe ten. Yeah, I wouldn't even want to try it to be honest with you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, here is a little bit of a code from uh, from the app, something that I don't know how ethical it is. So I don't know how correct it is, but I found it really cool. Um, so I needed some methods to be available for me in different pages. So of course I could make a, a, a static method, but that implies static variables. And you know, yeah. like this, you go from, you bounce from one concept to another. So um, for example, I needed to refresh the calendar every time from any page if the user is making any change to their their wow. appointments their events so what right. i did i created all the variables dynamic all the all the methods dynamic but i made the page static so that gave me access to all the methods and all the variables in it yeah now again i don't know how ethical is that <laughs> <laughs> that's fine I mean, we're learning, right? And so that, and that's the whole point, right? The whole point of learning is to try out different things and see what works. And you know what? You might have found a new way that a lot of other folks are going to try out now too. <laughs> well, now as my experience increased, I can see where I can do improvements, lots of improvements. And yeah. I, I will deliver them maybe when I finish my, my final year. But it's, um, it's okay to don't know. It's okay to try stuff. And if they work, leave them for a while and maybe come back to them when you have more experience. Right. Looks like we have a lot of folks. A lot of folks are already asking you questions, man. This is, this is interesting. So Marius is coming in and he's asking... How much does Sync Fusion cost? So, and I think that's an interesting question because for people that are learning, right, they probably don't have a lot of money to spend on a control or more like a control package or suite or something like that. You know, those things can be a little expensive. So, how, like, did, did Sync Fusion, um, did they reach out to you and, and give you some controls or, you know, were you able to get them from somewhere? Like, how do you get these controls? Um, I found Syncfusion very early, and when I went to their website, their fee per month was about a thousand euro. Now I'm a student; I don't have money at all, so I I went on other paths. But later on, um, uh, somebody from the online community told me that for individuals, it's free. You get a free community license. So uh, I went on their page. I knew now what I was looking for, and I made an account and everything. It's for free if you're an individual. Now, if you want to use Sync Fusion in your company, I, I suppose that you need to pay the fee. But okay. if you're working for personal projects, you don't need to pay absolutely anything. Okay. So now you have this app, and your app is, you know, in app stores, and it's your app. Like like you said, it doesn't belong to the company. And is your app free? I'm guessing. Yes, it is free. The app is free. So then under that under that premise, and I'm guessing Sync Fusion will allow you to use it. But if your app was personal, but you made money from it, would, at that point, would you have to pay for it? No, I don't think so. If I remember from reading their, their, uh, their uh, terms and conditions, as mm -hmm. long as you don't belong in... Uh, so if you're not building the app in a company with more than five people, it's free. Oh, Really? That's awesome. Yeah. I did not know that. So that's good to know. Yeah. Uh, me neither. It took me about four months to find out. <laughs> right. And then we have Jeremy. Jeremy's in the chat here in, um, on YouTube. And Jeremy's saying, Sync Fusion controls are pretty nice. So I haven't, I haven't played with the Sync Fusion controls. What are, what are some of the things that you use? So I know you use the calendar, but like, what are some of the other things that are in the collection? So I use the I use the UI uh, interface kit, which allowed me to play with the interface. They kind of give you some templates, and you build upon them. Yeah, which was was really nice. And then I use the status bars there from Sync Fusion, some fonts. So I'm, usually it's about front end. Usually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For example, in in this slide, this is how I implemented the calendar in the in the app. I don't know, there are mm -hmm. 10 lines of code. Now, okay, don't think about the logic because the logic I had to do with in Xamarin. In, yeah, but just having a calendar in your app, that's all you need to do. 
That's great. Yes. It's, it's really nice, really easy. You read the documentation and they told you put this in the XAML file or put this in your CS file and you have your calendar when you start your app. Now it's not going to do anything, but the, the calendar is there. <laughs> we, have some, we have another question too. I wanted to make sure that we addressed really quickly before we move forward. And this is from Waled. I think Waled is how we pronounce that. Um, did you ever try Flutter? So Flutter is another similar to Xamarin, but you know, different language, different ecosystem. But it allows you to write applications that target multiple frameworks, and multiple, you know, OSs and stuff like that. Have you thought about using Flutter? Uh, I heard about Flutter way, way uh, after I found Xamarin. So at that point, I wanted to go on with Xamarin. I really liked it. Maybe next time, why not? They have really different concepts and different abilities. So if, okay. if I'm going to do mobile development, I will definitely try it. Okay, great. All right, cool. Yeah, so let's keep going. All right, okay. so what else do you have in the slides? So why I chose Firebase is because Ooh. I didn't have any experience with uh, with no SQL databases and real-time databases. In college, we do a lot of SQL, a little bit about MongoDB, but not too much. Uh, and it provides you a service for authentication with secure authentication. And of course, you can play with APIs, another concept from college that I, I gained experience uh, by doing this application. Um, here is a, a snapshot of how I communicated with the Firebase database uh, through the Xamarin, through C Sharp. Again, they have a really nice documentation. So it's uh, it was challenging, but it's doable. Right. So, so for folks that might be new and don't know, tell us a little bit about what, what does Firebase offer for you from a mobile developer perspective? Like, like, why would mobile developers be interested in using Firebase? Um, well, at the stage where my app is, is really fast. And I expect nothing more if, if I'm going to have an, uh, so many users. But being a real-time database, you can actually visualize when people are, are making modifications in, in, you know, using the app, which yeah. is very, very cool. Another thing is that if you, did, if you change the design of the database, it, it would not crash. So, for example, if my subject has um, has three fields, and I just decide that from now on it's going to have four. If you're careful with your code, the app won't crash. It, it doesn't matter if you have three fields over here and in the other one you have four. But of course, you have to be careful with your code. Sure, for sure, sure. So, is is um is Firebase so? So Firebase itself, would you say it is like a, is it like a document database? Is it like, yeah. you know, I can just store objects in it and then I don't have to worry about it kind of thing? Yes, yes, exactly. And if you want to import, for example, all, your, all the data from the database, uh, you can do it in a JSON format. And if you want, for example, to, I don't know, import data again you can do a json document and just import it in there and it's going to be very nicely laid out cool and then it looks like you use git and github as well yes i did i did because uh well they're used a lot in the industry they're very popular and you need the uh, version control tool if when you're building code code yeah. it's it's very important and github because um i decided to build public publicly i was uh teached so to do because um so on reddit there was a very generous person uh called phil leo who um made a program for people in my situation with their internship uh, canceled where you would have a place where to demo your app review your code get feedback so he was all the time underlining please build publicly you don't yeah. just appear at the end with like look i build that <laughs> just just do it do it publicly no. answer question no. get help yeah exactly right. so you know i was tweeting all the time about my app and in real time you could see on github every changes that i was making right. while right. i was designing the app so yeah and of course contributes to open source 
that's, that's true. We can leave that out. It's it's amazing the the amount of of open source projects out there that can help you build your own. Yeah. So out, outside of using Git and GitHub, would you say that there's a lot of open source that really helps contribute to your application? Yes, I did found demos about using Firebase with Xamarin. Um, I found different uh, projects with Sync Fusion as well. So, you know, if I was lacking Im imagination, I could always download the Xamarin app and see like how that person create things. I could go through the code. So that's open source. <laughs> right, 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 for sure. I mean, I'm, I'm one of those folks that I like to, I like to browse GitHub. You know, it's like a, one, I like to go into like the explore area. So, you know, on the top of GitHub, it says explore and trending. I like to browse through those different areas and see what people are interested in, what they're working on. And also too, if it's something that I know about, like I want to see how they implemented that as well. You know, so that now for me, that's, that's just like, that's practical learning, right? Cause I, yes. I'm not just, I'm not just reading a book. I'm, I'm reading something that you can actually run. You can actually play with it. And then, you know, someone else has, has vetted it out to some extent and then like, okay, well, I guess it works. I'm going to put it on GitHub and then we'll see what happens. <laughs> exactly. It was, it was very nice. I didn't get any, any, uh, not red flags about my code. I'm very happy about that, but I seen that that's a lot of traffic going around there. So I'm really happy. I hope I'm helping people how I was helped by others. <laughs> so it feels to me. That like you, so again, we're, we're talking about a four month span of time, right? And it feels to me that you picked up a lot of stuff. You picked up Xamarin, you picked up Firebase. I'm guessing you picked up C Sharp as well because you weren't doing C Sharp before. You, you, you picked up, you know, these Sync Fusion tools. You picked up a lot of stuff in a little bit of time. Um, what was, I want to know what, like, what was that like for you? Like, do you feel, was it like a difficult thing for you to achieve? Do you feel like, it was something that's manageable and that you could continue to grow and evolve at that pace? Or, you know, do you feel like it was very, you know, challenging for you to achieve that? It, it wasn't easy, but I suppose if you're staying in your comfort zone, you're never going to evolve. Now, like any programmer, programmer sometimes I feel like I'm a god. Sometimes I feel that I want to hide under my desk because nothing works. Uh, I went through these stages all the way while that while I was building the the app. Some, for example, uh, implementing the Firebase authentication, it was it was so hard. I don't know why. I'm 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 looking back now and I don't understand. But then and there it was, what? <laughs> Security is challenging now. I'll tell you, and it's one of those things that it it doesn't get easier the longer you're in the industry. Security is always going to be a challenging thing because the devices that we're using and the things that we're creating are always changing. And so we always have to keep coming up with new ways to secure them. So trust me, it's, I'm not trying to discourage you. Well, just let you know. <laughs> security, security is not easy to do. No, no, no. I never went in depth in it, but no, I am pretty sure it's not. Yeah. Yeah, security is not um, about the milestones, as I said, APIs, we learned a lot about them in college, but because it was all theory, just the name made me scared. I, I never understood exactly what's an API until I got the chance to use it. And when I got a chance to use it, I was like, oh, okay, this is not so hard. Um, yeah. Another milestone, the interface. It needs to be simple, intuitive, attractive for the user, I yeah. was always attracted about logic, so mm -hmm. thank you, because Syncfusion was there to give me a, a hand of help. <laughs> and I kind of tie into what you're saying. So someone in the chat um, here on YouTube just said, soon I'll be writing my first iOS app using Xamarin. Anyone know of any websites that showcase a wide range of good UI components? So I know there used to be sites that used to do like... Um, like they'll show you the designs, you know what I mean? Like they wouldn't yes. give you the code, but they'll say, hey, I designed this thing and this is what it looks like. And they'll show, put screenshots of different pages and different sections of their app. Um, I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. I'll try and find it before the stream is over. But I know there are sites that do do that type of stuff. There are websites out there that they give you 
uh, actually templates for Xamarin interfaces. You can actually read their blog and then go on their GitHub and, and get a sample of their code. So they are, they are open source as well, so you can always play with them. You know, there's one called uh, GryoKit. I don't know if you've ever heard about GryoKit. A graph no. is actually really interesting. I'll put it in the chat so so you could see it and everyone else in the um, everyone else on the stream could see it. But they're really interesting. I believe the team that makes this is out of Brazil. Um, but if you go to the website and you click on screenshots, it'll show you some of the interesting things that you could build with like their out of the box templates. And I, I think it looks really cool. Yeah, yeah. There, there, there's a lot of resources out there. You just you know need the patience to to go over them, understand them, apply them, but they're there. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, so so these are milestones you went to. I'm really interested to see, like, where is your app? Like, where can we get it? Like, what operating systems? You know, tablets, phones, smartwatches. Like, like, where does it exist? <laughs> and um, and I actually, really want to dive into some code too to see, um, like, what was that experience like for you? Yeah, so the app can be found on the Apple Store and on Google Play. Mm -hmm. Now, please keep in mind that I'm still a, a novice in uh, mm -hmm. in doing apps, so be gentle with my app because I know in I can improve it. And um, I will share my Visual Studio now. Oops, okay. Yeah, I, lo I lost my mouse. I lost my mouse. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this is the. Uh, this is one of the class open. It's my account. It's my home page. Yeah. Uh, this is the the C sharp code, and then we have the front end in the XAML file. Now I know it looks scary. <laughs> um, That's a lot of XML. Yes, it is a lot, and you know, it's. Um, I always found it that it's very similar with HTML, with all the margins and with CSS, it, it was like, I had some basics from college that really helped me to understand everything okay. that's happening. Yeah. Uh, these styles that I'm importing over here are from Syncfusion for, uh, for different, this is for example, for a button. Yeah. Yeah. And um, here, it's, as I said, it's front end. So it's all about uh, where you put different components in you know how you how you put them on on the user screen in the center or and so on fonts text uh here is a lot of help and, uh, and so so i know there's a lot of xml here for folks but i i also want to preface it with saying so xamarin has a few different options for building apps and you mm -hmm. chose specifically to use xamarin forms right because yes. again with xamarin forms you could reuse more of your code right but yes. did you ever at any point think about using like Xamarin for Android and Xamarin for iOS? Or did you just like Xamarin Forms looks like the path that I want to go down right now? No, I was uh, I was very strong on the idea that I want to do it on Xamarin Forms and have an app at the end for uh, Android and for iOS. I okay. was really strong on that idea. Now, some, some things, they had to be implemented differently for 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 each platform mm -hmm. but and that was one of my milestones but um it was challenging and i was finding help just on one side here is here is what you do for android yes of course but what do i do for ios or the other way around but, but i was persistent so i i think i i found a way I can give you an example if you want about um, how you implement different things for different platforms. So the Firebase authentication API needs a different implementation for each platform. So if we have, for example, how we register. So we need the user's email and the user password. <coughs> I'm sorry. So this is an interface that describes my methods and their parameters. And there is another uh, method over here, user ID. Now, as you see, it doesn't have any implementation. My, my method, uh, it's ending in a semicolon, which is really uh, weird, but that's how we do it for interfaces. <laughs> now, if I go to the Android, I can see I have here register. So this is the implementation for the Android. It's okay. exactly how I am connecting 
to the Firebase instance and I create a user with email. This is actually the API of the Firebase. Mm -hmm. I'm passing the email and the password. I'm taking a token back. I send an email to verify uh, so the user can verify their email and then I return a, to a token. Got it. And okay. these are just, you know, some, some checkings that I'm doing if the user already exists or not. And okay. then again, if you go to, to iOS, we have the same thing, but it, just small, small changes to work for iOS. Okay. So, so here's one of my questions then, because mm -hmm. I'm guessing there's a Firebase API, right? That exists yes. for .NET. So why is it that you had to implement it differently for iOS and Android? Uh, I think that's the way it's created. I don't know the answer for sure, but I was trying to do it in the shared uh, code base and I couldn't. Okay. I couldn't, so then I was thinking, okay, maybe I need a different implementation. And of course, that was the answer. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I was kind of curious about yeah. that. Uh, I wanted to say, like, if you look here, like the amount of classes that I have just for iOS, so I have five, that's yeah. it. That's the only thing that I had to implement differently. Now, if I go in the shared project, you can see if I'm going to expand all these folders, how many things I was able to do in the shared project, which right. is so cool. That's a huge amount of code. Well, 32,000 lines of code, to be honest. Ooh. It's a lot of code. It is. <laughs> yeah. So it like the, the the big part of my work was done in the shared project. There were just five classes that they needed a different implementation. And they were all about Firebase. Got it. Well, you know what too? It's it's kind of good to see that you are able to target the, these multiple platforms and most of your code could be reused, right? So because I'm sure that's a huge benefit. Because the mm -hmm. alternative now would be well, I have to write this thing in Swift and then I have to write this thing in Java and then I have to, you know, I have to do different things or or even with even with Xamarin itself, right? Like you'd have to write a Xamarin iOS thing and a Xamarin Android thing. Um, and even though it's still C sharp, like they're still separate platforms. But now like this kind of Xamarin forms, which is the common denominator that says, hey, well, you know, we'll we'll figure out how to draw things on the screen and then you could just implement your logic and we'll take away the rest of it. Yes, it's it's doing Xamarin Forms does a lot of work for you when you think about that, a lot of work for you. I think under under the the C sharp code, it's still going native. So imagine the amount of work that that Xamarin does for you. I'm curious to hear. So you know, we know you have this app. You've built it. It's it's in the store. Um, I don't. You know what? I don't even think we've given told folks the name of the app. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> but the name of the, the app is diary right yes it is college diary and it's available in any country okay yes at the end of my slides i have a really nice poster with it <laughs> one of the things i want to make sure that we talk about so we, we've spoken about a lot of the good things that you've seen right like we've spoken about like the things you've learned and the you know your experience with sync fusion with xamarin what are some of the things you think you'd have done differently now that you've gotten to this point? Like, do you look back at anything and say, oh man, I wish I did this, or I wish I knew about that, or, you know, do you have any of that type of, um, those type of thoughts? Um, yes, for example, my app doesn't have notifications because in my head, the logic was, for example, if I want to have a notification for a um, calendar event, uh, in my mind was a, it was an infinite loop that's going to check whatever time is it now, if it's matching the, the event time and date. And of course, that's not the answer. But at that moment in time, that's what I knew. So that's why my app doesn't have any notifications. So um, I suppose when you're starting an idea, like you can find bits and pieces everywhere, but you kind of need to come with things on your own as well. That's true. That's very true. <laughs> And so speaking of that, I do, we do have a question from someone that's in here and they're asking, what do you do when you feel so frustrated from the program that you're writing or feeling that it's impossible to do the work? So have, do, have you ever gone to that point? Particularly yeah. as a student, I know as a student, I felt like that a lot, but have you ever gone to the point that you were like on the brink of just stopping and doing something else? 
Oh yeah. If I'm alone, I'm going to cry. If I'm not alone, I'm going to shout. Emotions depending on who's in the room. Yes. And uh, my fiance, who's not in the department of software development, he's a, he's a retail manager. He, he knows everything about what I do. And mm -hmm. usually I talk to him. You know how, how, uh, how developers, they have a rubber duck that they talk to, to zoom out, to zoom, to zone out. Yeah. yeah. So I go to him to zone out. So I just tell him about my arrays and how we count from zeros and what the stack yeah. is. And to be honest with you, all the time he tells me, something that puts my mind to work so i can go back to my computer to to do something oh that's yeah. good yeah and you know it makes me think about how important it is to have supports right yes and and you know sometimes that's technical support as in like someone that's familiar with it familiar with what you're doing and able to help you but sometimes mm -hmm. it's just good to have emotional support you know like i'm having a really bad day and this problem is really hard and i I've been sitting and looking at this code for hours and I haven't been able to figure it out. And sometimes you just need someone to like have a conversation with for five minutes, you know, like you could walk away from the machine and go somewhere else and have that conversation. Maybe, you know, go to the beach if, you know, you have a beach and <laughs> different, but then, you know, you have to give your mind a moment to clear up, you know what I mean? And then once your mind is in a better space and you're able to think more clearly, then a lot of the times I find like the answer comes eventually, but like we can't keep forcing the thing to happen. You know what I mean? Like your brain is a muscle, right? And just yes. like every muscle gets tired and it needs a break, <laughs> you know what I mean? So sometimes you have to give it a break. Yes, if it would be great if you could just stop thinking about the problem. Like if you saw Man in Black when you're eating pie and you just let, let your, your, uh, your, uh, your brain to think about something else. Now that's something that I cannot do. I try to educate myself. Yeah. I haven't been successful yet, but it would be great because usually that's when the solutions come to you. Got it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. So we have just about 10 more minutes um, to go. Oh, so we've had a lot of interesting questions and stuff like that in the chat. Um, a lot of folks seem really interested in this app. I know we talk about open source a little bit. Is your, is your app, I know your app is on GitHub, but is it on a public GitHub repo? Is it a private repo? Can yeah, it, it, it is. It, it, sorry, I'm really sorry. It is public. Um, now it has the toughest open source uh, license, unfortunately, but I tell you what I did that because I didn't understand the, the licenses. I, yeah. I'm not, I'm not into law. I was reading through them. <laughs> I could understand half of them. So yeah. I said to myself, until I understand what I'm going into, I'm just going to put wherever it's the most popular. And it seems that I didn't make a really good choice, so what, but what it's there for public. Sorry. What license did you pick? Uh, the something with G I'm really sorry. I can't remember GPL? the name. You have a GPL three license. Uh, I, yeah. Yeah, so I know that's not very friendly, but I will change that. <laughs> but I mean, people can still contribute to it, though. You know. Yes, they and I. I had requests. I was so oh. yeah. I was so I was like, really? Do you want to contribute to my to my college diary? <laughs> well, you know what's good about that is, kind of like when we were talking earlier about doing things in the open and doing things publicly, right? Like just as you're learning and kind of going through the process. Other people will learn from you too. Just like we're having this conversation right now. And I know we have a few students that are in the chat that are having conversations and asking questions. You know, everyone's kind of, you know, regardless of whether you're the person on camera or not, like we're all kind of learning together, trying to figure things out. And, um, you know, just you sharing your experience and you putting your things on GitHub and folks being able to go through your commits and see the things you've changed and the things you've made better and the things you've added, you know, it helps them as well. Um, now I don't have the original repo there and I tell you why, because I had the database keys there and I oh. didn't realize that. So I created the new, a new repo and I just put all the code there. So the commits are not there. Uh, well, yeah. Well, I was, I, as I said, I'm, I don't have experience. I did a lot of mistakes. <laughs> and you know, and that's what I'm saying. And that's, it's fine to make mistakes. The thing with mistakes is that we have to recognize them and then grow from them, you know? Because it's one thing to make a mistake and recognize it, 
it's another thing to make the mistake and keep making it over and over and over again, right? Yes. Like we gotta we gotta be able to adapt and and progress and you know and, and do better. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, here there is a, a small video about how the app looks. It's it's not gonna go really fast into it. This is the forgot password page, the sign up page, and. Um, then I'm going back to the login page and I'm going to use my credential to log in. And then you will able to see the insights of, of the app. Now it's really simple. So don't, don't expect rocket science. Uh, <coughs> so once you sign in, this is the, the home page where you see the GPA from all your subjects and the events that are due from the calendar in the next uh, seven days what's most important to, to focus on. Now, if you click on a date, you are able to um, add a new event. Or if you click on an event, you're able to modify it or delete it. Now, I'm just making a new event to, to show you how it's going to be showed on the home page. And you have a subject, you have a description for your own information, a start and end date, a start and end time. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, colors, because who doesn't love colors? <laughs> this is how you view an event, the one that I just created. And now if I'm going back to the home page, you can see the, the event that I just created. It's been updated there. Right. Now I'm going to create a subject. Now this is going to take a few seconds. <laughs> uh, uh, the forms have validations. So if you insert any incorrect information that will make the app crash, will will notify the user to make the changes before submitting. Right. Um, now, I don't know about other countries, but in Ireland we have continuous assessment, which means you you get uh, grades for your projects during the year test or small exams so you have to put a percentage for the continuous assessment and some for the remaining for the final exam now if you go into a subject you can see all the details for that subject uh you, if you click on the email of your lecture you can you you're directed to use an app to send an email if you at a final exam, I'm going to show you how progress bar is going to change for the GPA and the final exam. Now I'm going to add a CA. Uh, you put in the percentage of the CA and your result from 100. Now, again, I was targeting Ireland. Uh, students so it might be different yeah it might be different from other countries uh so now i'm gonna go back to the home page that's a help if you don't know what everything means <laughs> now i'm going to back go back on my home page and you're gonna see that the, the overall gpa changed as you insert results yeah and uh, yeah kind of that's it now i'm just gonna delete the subject and that's it. You have a calendar and you're going to monitor the progress for each subject individually. Cool. Now, like like, this is on, on GitHub. And so if folks yeah. are interested and they want to do one that is not based on Ireland's education system and based on maybe yeah. Australia or South America or Canada or somewhere else, I'm sure they could borrow the shell absolutely <laughs> and they absolutely. could implement their own logic behind of it right because the it, for me like looking at your navigation looking at the way that the pages flow from one into the other it looks like it makes a lot of logical sense it looks like it it flows very seamlessly so now i think it's just a matter of putting the right logic in the back of it to make sure it makes sense for whatever school or whatever education system that you're in Yes, absolutely. In Ireland, we we get the we get our results in percentage. I think in America it's with letters A, B, C. So yeah, you can you can change it to to suit your needs. <laughs> um, well, about this page, it looks like there's a lot of people involved in this in this app. It is because I don't know Photoshop. I don't know how to create <laughs> icons. Uh, I I had two mentors, uh, Liliana O'Sullivan, who I told you introduced me to Xamarin, and a senior full stock uh, .NET developer from New Zealand. Mm -hmm. uh, 
social me media i was promoting and building publicly but uh alexandru moisa was uh was taking care of you download the app yeah so and sure. damien doran he he didn't know if his internship was going to be cancelled or not so he contributed for a while until he resumed his internship Okay. Yes. Wow. And this is the poster of the app. You can find the QR codes over there to download it or go to, to my Facebook. And right. uh, yeah, this is kind of everywhere on Facebook at the moment for, for Ireland <laughs> and right. in some in in some supermarkets. Really? Okay. Yeah. So this, this this is a big deal. Yeah, well, that's when you have relationships. I have my fiance who works with supermarkets, so there I am. Yeah. <laughs> Very, very cool, man. This is this is amazing. Um, looking in the chat, so a lot of folks seem to really seem to like the aesthetics of the app. Um, Jeremy is saying, wow, this looks pretty darn nice. Um, you know, we have some like heart emojis and stuff like that in here. Someone here on YouTube is asking, uh, so this is from Check Your Phil. It's asking, how did you test all this stuff in your app? So did you do any like software testing or metrics or crash analytics or anything like that? No, because I didn't have the time to learn that part of development. So I did a lot of manual testing with my colleagues from college. So some trial. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of trying to break the app. <laughs> so yeah, that's the way we did it. Well, you know, that just means that you know your code base really, really well. Because you've been in and out of it like over and over and over and over again. Yes. Um, yes. So another question is coming in. So uh, micro faster, I think, is what this person's name is, and I think they're they're just coming into the stream right now. But um, this person is asking, how many years of experience do you have? So when I started the app, I was in my third year of college. Uh, now I just started my fourth year, so I would say I have three years of learning experience. Right. Cool. And then uh, some more questions that are coming in. So check your Phil is also asking. Um, it says you have in your repo lots of projects in Python, C Sharp, Java, and even C++. How did you manage to have so many projects on different languages? Uh, most of the work or uh, repositories that you find on on uh, Jesus on GitHub, they are my projects from college. Okay. I just so think that's, that's that it's very cool to share. Yeah. That's very cool. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, um, we're coming around just about time. Um, let me switch this over really quickly. Uh, I think this has been great, man. Um, like we learned a lot about you and about your app and how you built it. Um, you know, and it seems like we do have a lot of students that are here that are really interested in, in learning and, you know, lots of questions about that type of stuff. If you were supposed to give anyone that, you know, that's new, that's you know interested in building anything, whether it's a mobile app or a desktop app or web app or anything like that. They, you know, they're a new person and they just want to build something. What type of advice would you give them? If it's scaring you to death at the beginning, it's okay. It's okay. You just need to, to put, to set your mind that you want to finish your project and just go ahead and try it. In the worst case scenario, it won't work. That's that's the worst that it could happen. In the best scenario, you always learn e even when you fail. When when I started doing the app, I didn't have any idea what it's going to be and how if I will be able to do it. But just be persistent and and you'll get there. Just practice, practice, practice. <laughs> practice, 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 practice. Practice makes perfect. I believe in it. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, your door. I mean, this has been great. Um, thank you so much for coming on our show this week and thank you for everyone that's here and that's watching. Um, you know, I know we have folks from all over the world that are, that have tuned in to check us out. So I really appreciate you spending, you know, this past hour with us, you know, learning about Xamarin, you know, learning about college diary and, and, you know, seeing some of the really cool things and really interesting experiences too, that, that Theodora has gone through. So, um, again, we do this show, um, every other Wednesday. Uh, if you have any suggestions for any additional shows that you'd love to see us do, um, if you have, if you want to be a guest on the show, <laughs> you know, let us know. <laughs> and um, you know, hopefully we'll see you all again in another two weeks. But other than that, have a good afternoon, have a good day, have a good night wherever you are in the world, <laughs> and we will see you again the next time for On.net Life. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs>